What is up, Fox Body fans? Welcome to the house of Doula. On this video, it's all about Eagle Bruises floor. In this video, I'm going to cover everything it took to get to this point. We're going to be prepping the floor, masking it, spraying on SPI epoxy primer, and then we're going to be putting on lizard skin sound dender and ceramic coat for a heat shield. So we have a lot to cover in this video, so please get comfortable. Stay tuned. Yes, it's all about Project Eagle Bruises floor. Listen guys, you know my project here, 1979 Mustang that is getting a EcoBoost motor out of a 2015 Mustang, a little 2.3 liter four banger. It's gonna be a sweet project, but finally I'm working on something other than the engine bay and moving on to the interior. I've done a lot of work since I've last talked to you guys, ran into a lot of problems, um, but we are getting close enough where I figure I can at least get the camera out and start showing you kind of what I'm done here. As you can see, it's, it's half wrapped. He's got some stuff dangling here. It's in bad shape, but we're gonna get it straightened up. Let me catch you up on what I've done, and then we'll talk about the lizard skin. All right, well, here she is. So listen, let's take a look at it here. Okay, first off, let me explain. I decided that I was gonna tackle the floors because I figured it's the next best thing to do in the car uh, so that I can start wrapping up the interior, just kind of get some stuff like that squared away because I already had the carpet out in the back because we're working on electrical um, and starting to get some of the stuff done back here for the battery box and all that kind of other stuff. Um, and also, I just figured it was time to do it. I wanted to do something other than the engine bay, as you can know, and, you know, we've, we've spent the last, what, two years working on everything underneath that plastic. And um, this is what I started to do. So hey, anybody who has done floors on a Fox body knows how much of a pain it is to get the butyl off um, that sound deading that's glued on. Guys, I spent, I don't know, a long time with a torch burning this stuff off. You gotta get a torch or you gotta get dry ice. Dry ice is probably a better way to go to freeze it and chip it off. Um, I used a torch though and I scraped off all the butyl sound deadening off of it. First off, I stripped out the interior as you can see here. Everything's been removed, unbolted, the seats are gone, the seat belts, everything is bagged and tagged and labeled over there. The garage is an absolute mess right now because we've got parts over there, headliner, back seat sitting on the 86 right here, panels back there. So I stripped out the interior, started doing all the work on the butyl here. Now when you use a torch, you gotta get it hot enough where it gets off, but you're always gonna leave a little bit of film, and that, honest to God, is the worst part of it. So I started wire wheeling the, uh, the leftover film from the Beetle off the car, and yeah, so this is kind of where you see now, except not. You're asking yourself, why is it metal? Huh, why did you go to bare metal? Well. So there's no rust on this car. As you can see, the floorboards are immaculate, just like the rest of this car is extremely solid. But yeah, so look at the driver floor here. So it's in good shape. It did have some surface rust on it. And I mean like pitting. It's not, you know, it's solid. It's no rust here. You can see on the bottom side is not rusted, but it did have some surface rust that I wanted to take care of. And this is KBS Rust Seal. So this side has been prepped with OSFO. I sprayed it down with a rust, ne rust neutralizer and then put some KBS Rust Seal on it. This is the same stuff I used in the rusty areas in the cowl and the engine bay um, under the cowl area. And it's it's held up really well. It's like Pour 15. It's the same type stuff. Here's a problem though. I kind of went overboard with it. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm doing this. I've got a whole canister. I'm not really doing anything else with it. I'm just going to protect the whole floor. So I did the entire entirety of the floorboards here okay passenger and driver's side did not do the amount of prep work that was necessary for this stuff to stick it loves sticking to raw metal that's been scuffed it loves sticking to osfo prepped etched metal it loved that this will not come off this chipped off and i mean chip i'm talking about you can take it scratch it and boom it's going to start coming apart what happened was I was recording something, a camera fell, it hit it, and it chipped a piece off, and I started peeling it like dead skin, okay? It was a nightmare, it was horrible. So, as you can see here, weeks later, hours later, with a grinder and a wire wheel, I have scraped it all off down to the metal, and that's where I'm at. I'm still prepping and getting everything ready because we're gonna have to spray primer on the bare metal before doing the lizard skin. So I did a little research and I was kind of looking for a product that I could spray on, really because I wanted to try something different. I've used Fat Matte before, 
it's just like Dynamat. Um, in fact, I've got Fat Mac is Extreme here. This is pretty common. Fat Mat Rattle Trap, okay? This is stuff I use on the 86. Nothing wrong with it. Works great. This is pretty good stuff. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. You can see I've got quite a bit left over from doing the floors on the 86. Nothing wrong with this stuff. It's super sticky. You know, it's your peel and stick style. Nothing wrong with it. You know, gives a nice, nice dead sound. But I want to try something just a little different. What we got here is lizard skin. This is what a lot of the professionals use in a lot of higher, higher end builds, which this is not. But I want to try something a little different because what I want to do is spray areas and kind of get a little bit more coverage on the floor, a little bit easier than you can get with something like this. The flip side of this, it takes a lot more prep work, right? You know what I mean? I've got to now prep the whole floor uh, for spraying this stuff. This stuff is water-based, okay? I got two gallons here, two different colors. They're two different materials. So Lizard Skin recommends putting these things on um, with a specific order. You want to put the sound dender on first and you put the ceramic heat coat on above it. Now you think it kind of be the other way around, but it's not. You put this stuff on, this is quite a bit heavier. Um, this feels pretty dense. And this is the ceramic coating. So this is two different products. You don't have to use both of them. You could use one or the other, I believe. In my case, I am after sound deadening the floor, but also I want to put ceramic on. I'm going to put the ceramic stuff on heavier on the passenger side because that's where the turbo piping um, is going to go, or the turbo pipe, the exhaust pipe is going to go. I, am going to, I do want heat control. I also want heat control on the roof, okay? We're in Texas. I know it gets hot here. I'm wanting a comfortable driver. You guys know what we're building here, and I'm willing to put this on the, on the roof as well. So, is the gallon, is it gonna be enough? Probably not, but it's a small car, and I'm only doing the floor, um, and I'm only planning on doing, you know, the top as well. So, this is, this is it. So, this is your sound control. It's heavy. We'll go through the details on how to put this on and everything else that's goes involved with installing lizard skin, but right now we're just not there yet, dude. I'm still prepping. Let's go back to the car. So be as it may, yes, I still have a lot of work to do. I decided to cut some corners somewhere. One being that I decided to leave the interior, or at least the dash in. Um, I didn't want to remove it. I've got a lot of wires running back through right now. Didn't really think it was necessary, but you're wondering why I remove it. Well, I don't want to get paint on it. That was one reason. But secondly, you really need to remove it to get back up in here. So this is your your firewall or your footwell um, sound any material that comes from the factory. Now I'm not going to go this far up, okay? This is only going to cover from this section all the way back to the trunk. And I'm going to keep it just to the floor. Now the roof is another story here. So the headliner's out. Um, I wanted the headliner out. Also, the tent has been removed off the car. If you know, don't know if you've noticed that, but the tent has been removed off the car. Um, Got to get the glue off. So this car is getting tore up, but hey, it's okay. You must tear down before you can rebuild. I got a wire wheel that I have become best friends with. And look at the dust I made. <laughs> so I need to put on a mask so I don't breathe that crap in. And then we got to tackle the bare metal because this Lizard skin is water-based um, and start rusting these perfectly uh, shiny metal floorboards. We don't want to do that, so we're going to primer it. Also doing it because their instructions say to do it. Okay, nowhere in here does it say you can spray over bare metal, so don't do that. It's really that simple. We're going to put primer on it. I've been out here for hours and I, at this point, I'm just really just scrubbing and vacuuming and scrubbing and vacuuming I'm using a Scotch-Brite sandpaper. And you can see this is just all dirt, but I'm having to get all this off, of course, so we can wax and grease remove it, clean it um, with a solvent and get it as clean as possible. I understand this is going to be like absolutely perfect, but that's kind of where we're at. So we got everything masked around the dash, down by the pedals. Um, 
cleaning up on this area over here on the floor side. I don't have a definitive line, so all I'm really focused on is, you know, the center of the car here. Um, the bare metal is going to be, of course, epoxied. So I've got the SPI epoxy we'll put on it. And then the rest of it's going to be just scuffed and sprayed with lizard skin. Now, this is where I'm kind of going against lizard skin's directions, and I might, you know, I might regret it, but I think it's going to be fine. Is really this this glue and stuff on the side here. So I'm not I'm not that concerned about it. I'm gonna leave it because the stuff I'm spraying is a latex base. It's gonna go on top of it, it's not gonna stick um, to here, but I'm not gonna go up in through here. At least I'm not really planning on it. What I'm planning on doing is just really the bare metal areas here or the metal areas that has been cleaned and uh, scuffed up. So you're not gonna see any of this. So I'm doing a lot of work, just some of you won't see. The plan, at least for the corners, the trunk and stuff is just to get it up inside the wheel wells as much as I can. I'll probably end up just coating, at least not with the primer, but with the um, the, the uh, lizard skin, kind of up through here, and it is just get up in the fender well. I haven't decided yet if I wanted to create like a definitive line. So I do want you know to keep some things out of it. Like I'm gonna mask this, the braces going up. I don't want those sprayed, because you gotta remember when you open the truck on this car, you do actually see some of the stuff, right? Um, and then I have to think about what is going to be painted avalanche gray when I do go to paint it. So, you know, I'm not going to overthink it. I know it's easy to, you know, treat this like the bodywork of the car. And it's, I'm really not, to be honest. It's similar. I'm keeping it clean, but I'm not going all the way as far as I would when we start doing the body and paint on it. Because again, I'm just, I'm just protecting the floor. I'm just doing an alternative to Dynamat. And that's the goal here, and just get it sprayed down. It's a 6600 series. The same thing, and I sprayed on the engine bay in there. This is good stuff. So we have this. Um, we'll need the activator. This is a wax and grease remover. So we'll need the activator that's up here. It's a one-to-one, -one, so one part epoxy and one part activator. And then we'll get a spray. I've already got the gun out, and you guys have seen my gun before. It's nothing special. It's an Eastwood. This is a... Low CFM gun, there's a Concourse LT1100. I've already got this thing set at 30 PSI, so what I like about this is it doesn't require a ton of CFM, um, which is good for smaller air tanks. I talk a lot more about this gun in that video. If you wanna go back to spraying epoxy primer on the engine bay, go back and watch that video. But otherwise, this is just good to go. We've got 30 PSI on it. Um, the gun should be pretty well set. If not, I'll set it up. And got a water separator here. This is about as good as it's gonna get. And Let's spray some primer. Okay, primer is done. Man, this stuff is hardcore. But it flows good, and it lays out good, and it's already dry to the touch. So this stuff dries up pretty good. So the floor is done. We got all the metal covered, which is that what, <laughs> was what I was out to accomplish. And the roof has been covered. So at this point, we're ready for a good base. And I think everything back here is gonna be good. So we're gonna scuff it up, clean it up again before we do the actual lizard skin. So we'll do the whole trunk floor pan all the way back through here and everything with the lizard skin. Hopefully that's enough. We'll see though. So the primer's done. Tomorrow, we'll skin the lizard and then slap it on the floor of this car. It has been a couple days and I think we're ready to shoot some lizard skin. So we're gonna take over to the bench. We're gonna look at the lizard skin, kind of go through the directions. It's not that hard. They wanna make sure that you do not shoot with anything under 60 degrees um, in this shop right now. It is 67 over there, it looks like. 67, so I think we're, we're fine. It's nice and warm in here. Um, and yeah, we're gonna read the directions. We're gonna try to get the gun out. I'm gonna show you the gun that I bought for it um, and we'll start spraying this floor, man. Let's go look at it. All right, the floor has been yet again wax and greased removed thoroughly with SPI's wax and grease remover. 
So reading the directions here, um, they say that the total amount of mills that you want to make this stuff effective is 40 mills. So what they're looking for is about 15 to 20 mills per coat. Um, it's gonna take two coats to get to 40. So that's what we're kind of gonna shoot after, although I think I'm gonna spray it a little thin, probably because I'm gonna try to get this stuff to extend throughout the whole car. We'll see. If I gotta buy another gallon of stuff, that's fine. Uh, they are very particular or about it right here in the black, that if you are shooting both products to make sure to shoot this first, um, and you can shoot um, the second coat when it's completely dry. So you don't have to wait for it to um, you know, flash over or film over or anything like that for a second coat. What they want you to do is spray a coat, let it completely dry 24 hours or more, spray your second coat, and then so on. So this is gonna take a, a couple days to complete. Okay, here it is. This is the whole complete package that I bought. Now, I didn't talk about cost, or at least I don't think I did. Both of these were $98 each, it's one gallon. It's not cheap, okay? So you got $200, roughly, for a sound deadener and ceramic insulation, and this was $100. I thought this was actually a pretty good bargain. This was $102.99 at Summit, and these are $98 each from Summit Racing. Um, so yeah, the whole kit and caboodle package here was around 300 bucks, which, you know, if it does its job well, it would be worth it, but inside the kit that we've got, for sure yeah we got a nice gun and see i thought that i would have buddy i have so many friends that restore cars that hey why not just loan this out to them you know i'm helping them out helping the community out so if anybody's in the area restoring their mustang or whatever car and you're you want to borrow a lizard skin gun hit me up uh don't go purchase it so anyways i thought i'd be helping people out now oh, look we got a decal we can add it to my fridge of course i'm actually running out of room man Fridge is getting pretty sick. Um, so anyways, we've got a spray gun here. They want you to shoot, I think, between 40 to 60 PSI. We're gonna shoot around 50. Um, just break it down right in the middle. Uh, you gotta make sure your air compressor can supply the CFM required, which I believe is, where was it at? Yeah, they wanna shoot at between 40 to 70 PSI on the gun. So you gotta make sure that your air compressor can handle uh, 40 to 7 PSI or 50 to 70 PSI at five CFM. Mine over here is an 8.6 at 40 and a 6.4 at 90. So it'll be fine as long as we don't go too high of pressure. I start losing a lot of CFM with higher pressures on that compressor. So we'll shoot around 50, we'll be okay. Um, it comes with a gauge. This is the mill gauge here. So this is kind of a kind of a cool little thing to give you. You can help check the gauge out. It comes with a nozzle. This is um, a 90 degree nozzle. You can screw this in at the tip here and it'll spray 90 degrees up. So if you're really getting under some fender wells, you know, you really can get up there, get it gooped up in there good. Comes with a stir mixer. So we gotta stir this stuff really good. They're very specific about stirring it. They want you to stir it till it's liquidy smooth, you know, but they don't want you to over stir it because there are particles within it that I guess you can break down or maybe damage by over mixing it. So, okay, so we'll just do that whenever time comes um, and it's water based so what I'm gonna do is get a bucket out here fill it with water as soon as I'm spraying all this stuff we're gonna throw it in there and clean it up it's gonna be messy but the gun is nice look at that orifice huge yeah so this is big this is bigger than most uh, bed liner guns um, it just tells you how thick the products gonna go on how much it's going to throw on so that little tiny bucket covering this whole floor yeah it's not looking good but that's fine, we can put one layer down, take my harder and cash, go buy another gallon of this stuff for 100 bucks. Yeah. All right, I almost forgot why I bought a whole bag of earplugs. So I'm using earplugs here to stuff into the holes, like all the seatbelt holes where I don't want this stuff to fill up. Technically, I could probably chase it afterwards um, and clean out the threads with a thread chaser, but I'm gonna go ahead and just stuff these up. And let's talk real quick about, I guess, the pattern and how I wish to do this. So or you know, kind of like my plan, my plan of action here. So what I'm gonna do at first is the ceiling. So I'm gonna do the roof here, get that done. Then I'm gonna work on the tow boards and move my way on the driver's side here, then flip over to the passenger side and just kind of get as much as I can to move on to the trunk and get as much as I can. So we'll figure it out as we go, but I do wanna get the ceiling first. Fingers crossed, let's start stirring this stuff, pour it and spray it. All right, I will say though, this gun is quite heavy. Once this stuff's full, filled up, filled up in it. But anyways, we're gonna get the ceiling here first.
All right, hey, check it out. First coat. So I've got about that much left in this. Um, so it's not, I didn't use all of it. I did not use one gallon, but I got one coat down. So I'm going to need another gallon to do a second coat. But man, it looks good. I love, love the texture it laid out. It looks good, doesn't it? I like the texture. So I've got the whole back here done. Let's go around here. So it's very wet and I'm expecting this to take a couple days to dry just because it's cooler in here. You know, it's not quite as warm as they recommend, but it'll get warm in here as long as I keep that garage door closed. So it looks pretty good. So here's the deal. I recommend, and if I had to recommend anything, this is what I do recommend, okay? Keeping the jar full. So I've had a couple struggles. One of them was, um, well, one, I forgot to turn the air compressor on, so I ran out of air. That was dumb. So then I had to also make sure that the cup was was full. Um, once it got down to about this much, you know, in the, in the cup, you start angling like this, it just wasn't picking anything up, which makes sense. So you got to keep more in the cup. Um, anyways, yeah. So when it got to about half full, I would just go over there on the floor and fill it back up. But I think it looks pretty good. I got all up in the fender wells. I got everywhere I wanted and nowhere I didn't want. Got back up in there. Um, and I've been using the gauge on and off. This is a pretty thin coat. I didn't get it even really all the way up to, let's see, where you recommended. Yeah, 24, 20, 20 mil. So I think on this, at best, I probably got 16 mil on it. I'm okay with that. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna put another coat on it. We'll lay it down heavier. But man, it looks awesome. It looks really good. Just the floor being one color looks really good. Cleanup is um, not bad. I mean, it's just the water. I just dug this stuff in water, threw it all in there, let it soak, pulled it out, used a bunch of rags, threw it in a bag here and then actually took the rest of the parts inside into the kitchen sink and used hot water and soap and it cleaned up pretty good, but I made a major mistake. Guys, I broke the gun, man. Yeah, I gotta take this inside to wash it, but let me show you. All right, so I did uh, take this thing apart as the instructions told you to. So basically you take, take the nozzle off here, So the cleaning instructions say take the nozzle off like this and then inside of here you've got this brass the brass nozzle which is this guy here so it screws in there with an 11 millimeter socket and keeps this whole gun together so this of course goes up to the gun uh, but i tell you what man it was a bear to get off i actually thought i was going to break it getting the bolts out so i thought maybe it had you know loctite or something on it but i did get it off so when I put it back on, I kind of put the same force on it, thinking that it was torqued higher than it was, and ended up snapping it. So hopefully, lizard skin is a Saturday, so I can't do anything about it now, but hopefully they can give me a new nozzle. Also be aware that it does splatter everywhere. Um, I've got it all over my GoPro right now, and it is like hard. So luckily I've got a lens protector on this camera. I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit. You can probably see the spots moving around. So that's one thing, uh, just kind of be aware of, because also when you spray this stuff, man, it actually does splatter. Um, it bounces off surfaces, so I'm glad I took the Mustang out of the car. I mean, out of the garage, but it wasn't it wasn't horrible. It wasn't like it's all over me. It's not all over my clothes or my shoes or anything. But it got on my hand a little bit, and I think I got some of my hair. You know, I think I got like a little little piece up here somewhere, which is kind of cool. So just keep that in mind when you're spraying this stuff. It does hit and kind of splatter a little bit, but that's really it. Welcome back to the garage, man. It is time for coat number two. We have got the gun fixed. Thanks to Lizard Skin for sending me another nozzle. Guys, and I'm not sponsored by them at all. Just saying thank you because that's pretty awesome of them. So, got the new nozzle installed. The extractor bolt kit came in today. Came right out. The gun is ready to go. We're gonna fill it up. Start spraying down our second coat. Let's do this. It's also nice, we got a little bit warmer weather today. It's like 70, 72 in the garage. It's perfect. Let's 
Second sound dinner coat is done. It is dry. It has been a few days later. We had to wait a few days because it is actually really cold outside or was really cold outside. So I couldn't spray the ceramic until it warmed back up. Now it's warm again. So it's in the 70s outside and the garage is 65 degrees. It's perfect for ceramic coat, but man, look at this stuff. I am super happy the way this stuff has turned out. It definitely lays out flatter once it dries. And, um, it doesn't have quite as much of a texture look to it, but you can definitely tell it's thicker this second round and you can definitely hear it also. It sounds really nice. I mean, listen to that. So this to me sounds just like there's dynamat on the floor. It has a nice thuddy sound, right? I mean, listen to that. If you remember that from earlier, That definitely has a different sound. The whole car is like that. The whole bottom of the car sounds like that, which is, in my opinion, the reason why you'd want to use something like this versus a stick on, uh, because you just have so much better coverage. But guys, this came out great. Man, it is solid, and I'm talking about tough. This stuff is like, like bed liner. I mean, it is it's very, very tough. For a latex type base, water-based paint, it's incredibly strong. Um, this all came out really good. I did have some cracking going on through here again and on this side, exactly where I expected, where it was going to crack, nothing I do about it. Um, that's just from that tar material, but the, everything else is adhered very well. The back is adhered really well. There's no cracks in the trunk area. And that's good because we're not gonna spray anything else. The trunk area is done, but listen to that. Man, look at that too. This looks looks so good. I love the way this stuff looks. So it makes the whole car look good. My little ear plugs have done a nice job. I'll just show you how thick I sprayed on it. So they've done a really good job covering the holes up. And we're moving on to ceramic here. This stuff is a ceramic based. Um, it decreases engine and solar heat gain and seals out moisture. That's what it says right there on the front. Um, but this stuff is supposed to be pretty good. It's supposed to drop it between 20 to 30 degrees. So, you know, if the roof is 100 degrees and we put this up on the bottom of the roof, then you know, you're talking about 70 degrees possibly. So that's, that's pretty significant, maybe even 60 degrees. So 100 degrees up here, 60 degrees down here. This is a Texas car, guys. It's gonna make a big difference. So my main area of focus for this product is not the whole floor or not everything that we did with a sound dinner, but it's gonna be just for the roof. So we're gonna spray the roof up here with it and we're gonna spray the, spray the floorboards just on the driver and passenger side up to the back seat. That's it. My main concern is keeping the engine heat and exhaust heat radiating from the ground up to the floorboards and making the interior hot. Not too worried about the back seat, not too worried about anything behind the back seat or the trunk area. We're gonna keep this stuff sprayed to where it needs to be applied. In my case, it's gonna be the floor on the driver and passenger foot wells and also on the ceiling. This stuff gets sprayed the exact same way. They do require a little bit of higher PSI. They want 50 to 70 on this one. This one requires 40 to 60. So we're gonna bump the gun up to 60 PSI on this stuff. And I think it's because it's such a lighter weight material and it is very light. I'm talking about, this is very light. So this has about probably a quarter in it, maybe a little bit more than a quarter. And this is heavier than this stuff is. I mean, you can hear it, it's totally different. So this stuff's a lot lighter. We're gonna be opening this up. We're gonna spray the same way we sprayed the sound dinner. And then we're gonna take the plastic off. We'll be done after we do two coats of this. The only thing that Lizard Skin really recommends doing before or between coats, once it's dry like this, is just spraying it off. I'm just gonna spray any dust that may have accumulated on it. Woo, man. This is quite a bit different looking. Weird how light this is. It looks heavy, looks the same color, very light. All right, this stuff is getting thicker 
and thicker and I hope this stuff lays down a little bit because I'm not a huge fan right now of the what texture of the way this stuff looks um, I don't know this looks kind of like tar to me I'm sure it's perfectly normal once it dries we'll see what it looks like it should lay down a lot flatter and look a lot you know duller like this stuff over here looks so yeah we'll see we'll see you on coat number two ceramic coat number two which is the last and final coat for this project here what is today today's last coat tuesday we're about to spray on the last coat to finish this up let me show you how this dried it looks really good man it actually dried and matches the sound deadener perfectly and thank goodness it lost a lot of its texture i was a little worried about it losing some texture here but it looks great nice matte finish again hard you know it really feels exactly the same when it dries as a sound deadener although it's not this is a ceramic coat same as up here i do have a little bit more texture up here um, probably just because i don't know probably you know just because the angle of the gun i need to probably use a 90 degree angle i'm not gonna lie the 90 degree angle on the roof would probably help that would keep me from having to tilt the gun back and creating you know cavitation air in the line so we may do that um but anyways yeah last coat so i did accidentally blow a little bit of the uh, the dried paint off of this that got into the paint you'll see some flakes on it, like right there um, one right there right there so you'll see some light marks in it over here that's just when I was spraying it unfortunately the gun hit that little area right there which is just you know where some old paint has dried it came flaking off the plastic and flying into the air and it fell onto it and got coated over I'm not worried about it don't care in my opinion it's the same thing as spraying over the dry stuff anyway so it'll adhere it'll be fine i promise let's go well starting to get kind of low <laughs> and once it gets like i said half halfway empty it really has a hard time spraying and i've got most of the floor done on at least the passenger side where the exhaust will go but i'm out and i don't have enough to do the passenger side so i'm scraping some off here i'm going to try to get what i can just out of the bottom in there there's not much left um yeah and the, this is basically empty hard to see in there but it's only about that much full so i'm going to try to scrape as much as i can try to get whatever left i can out of it all right the final coat is on and it is dry I'm about to unmask everything and show you guys the final product. In my opinion, it looks really, really good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I did not have enough ceramic coat to do full two coats on everything. I got one full coat on the roof, one full coat on both floor pans, driver and passenger. But on the second coat, I ran out and was able to get the roof done and the passenger floor pan, which is the most important two things that I wanted coated anyways. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't really have enough to do all of the driver. So anyways, not a big deal. Um, if you really want to be thorough though, you probably didn't get another, another gallon of the ceramic stuff, but I got everything covered that I wanted. I got the driver's side floor pan done and the roof done. So, hey, let's check it out right now. Okay, I am demasking it now. One of the things I just wanted to touch on real quick when you're demasking this stuff, it does have very, very thick buildup, of course, on the tape lines, and um, you can't even really see it. So you gotta be kind of careful. So, what I've been doing is using a razor blade and just kind of cutting it. But if you get a nice sharp line, see, like right here, I got a sharp line that I wanted, a nice definitive line. But if you get it just right, you can kind of just peel it, and hopefully, it'll tear just like that. And also, you notice I'm getting a lot of debris here that's being thrown down onto the floor. That's just coming off of the tape and mostly the plastic. The plastic here, all the overspray has hit. Once I'm ruffling the plastic up, it's falling on the floor. So we'll get this thing, you know, we'll blow it out. Little earplug trick. Works very well. Look at that. <laughs> you definitely see how thick it has become, too. I'm extremely, extremely happy the way this came out. Um, yeah, I just think it turned out awesome. I love this stuff. 
and I think it's gonna work really good. That is kind of the key here, is really more than looks um, is functionality of how well this is gonna work. But I'm telling you, it feels very solid, and um, you can just tell. You can tell this thing is gonna be quiet. It's almost like thumping on cardboard. It's pretty cool. So it's definitely done, it done its job. Now, how did I do? Let's talk about just the overall product. Let's talk about what I did and didn't do right. Let me show you the inside of it first here. It looks really good. I've unmasked everything. I think my lines are okay, right? I got a little mask, you know, missed a little bit of the masking there. But the lines are pretty good. Um, I like the line we've got back there and the lines we got here all the way up to the footboard. The firewall padding and yeah, it just looks good. I mean, I think it looks extremely good. It's so, you can almost tell, like, you can almost hear yourself when I walk in here. Um, it doesn't sound like a hollow box, even though it should, and it's not echoey, even though it should be. Um, the roof here came out really nice. I know it's really hard for this camera to focus up on the roof here, but it came out really nice. Um, it has a nice texture, and listen to that sound. It's so muffled. So I know this is gonna do its job really well. I love the fact that we have all that ceramic up here now. No heat transfer, or very little heat transfer on the floor and up there. So I think the product itself is gonna work really good. And I'll tell you, this, this stuff is it's pretty cool how it dries. Um, I will say though that the ceramic stuff, you can see as I rub on it, kind of creates a, uh, a white, almost like a little bit of white. As you can see right here where I was leaning over, I painted this section here, um, unmasked around the e-brake. That worked pretty good. But I was leaning, I put my hand here, and as I got off of it, you can kind of see like a little white spot. Um, that to me is probably just the ceramic particles. And again, you're not gonna be using this. This is gonna be carpeted. Anyways, we're gonna still have the jute padding and the carpet laid down on here. Anyways, so let's look at the back. Now, yes, I did have peeling here, guys. This is my biggest mistake. I said from the get-go that this is gonna be an issue. Um, and it is so it is peeling all through here and even right there and a little crack here So I had a problem with it in hearing on this stuff because of that tar material that I left on the fender I should not have done that. It's this stuff right here. It's a little different than the butyl The butyl came off okay, and it's like it's fine. I mean it's solid up here There's tons of butyl back there um, You know the sound deading that they put on the car is fine But this spray they put in the corners here is kind of like their seam sealer um, It's more the brown stuff that stuff I actually thought would adhere, you know, decent, but it's not, and it's flaking, and it's fine because this is all going to have juke padding on it. Anyways, really, I'm worried about the floor and the ceiling, and it is not going anywhere. I promise you that. It is super, super strong, um, and this stuff is very, very, very um, tacky. Like, when it adheres to something, it adheres. I've got overspray on it <laughs> through here, and you can just kind of hear it, and it's stuck. Like, this stuff's not coming off. So luckily we're gonna do body work and paint on it anyway, so I'm not worried about it, but it's not going anywhere. So anything this thing, this stuff touches, it is very, very good and it sticks really well. But man, look at that. It, I think this is pretty cool. I think it's gonna work very well. Will it work better than the stuff I got here on the Blue 86, the Dynamax stuff? I don't know, we'll see. But I can tell you that the difference is extremely noticeable. Listen to that. Okay, now I can't do that on my T-top car, but we could definitely do it on a section here. And it's got a back seat on it right now. Okay. I hope you can hear that on camera. It's very different. This sounds, and really what you're hearing rattling is this, but anyways, it sounds really good. The sound deadening part of it's really good. The product itself is really good. It is kind of expensive. Let's talk real quick. Would I do this again versus the Dynamat? Man, the prep work is kind of a pain, not gonna lie. The overall finished product is better. It's cleaner, it looks better. It covers way more area. That's what I really like about it is if you, know, if you were to try to roll you know, all the way front to back from the trunk back through here with dynamite or something, it would be very difficult because of all the curves. Um, you have a lot of crinkles, a lot of wrinkles in it, and you'd have a hard time rolling it straight. So I think, you know, when you're trying to cover a lot of area, it's definitely worth it. The trade-off is, of course, you have to do all the prep work um, to get everything clean and ready to go. So that is that. Right now it's a mess. I am cleaning up the wires, putting the wiring back, 
how it was. This all goes. I unplug stuff from the dash. This is that's their tail light harness, is what that is. Um, so it snakes back to the back, and um, I unplugged it from underneath the dash just so I can get it out of the way. And uh, man, it's I don't know. I, it's, it looks awesome. It almost looks like like carpet. It looks uh, kind of like a um, stealthy. It looks stealthy. Yeah, stealth fighter. It's like something you see on the outside of a jet airplane or something. So hey, I'm gonna wrap it up. This is a long video. We're done. Lizard skin is awesome. I highly recommend it. It is pretty expensive. But listen, I spent, what do we spend here? 300, 400 bucks. I spent $400 on all of this. Cleanup stuff was easy. Use water. I already had a box of rags. You need a box of rags. Um, that's it. Now I did use epoxy primer. You know, you don't have to do that unless you go to bare metal. So we epoxied it. Um, the SPI stuff is the best in the market as far as I'm concerned, or at least I've been told, and I have had no problems with it. Um, and the stuff sprayed out here on the lizard skin has been really good. So 400 bucks versus the Dynamat. Dynamat's expensive um, also, but the, the Fat Mat or the alternative that's just as good. It's up to you guys. I mean, it's really what you want to see. This is all going to be covered up in carpet. It is. I'm, gonna, I'm about to put all this stuff back in the car. That way I can get my garage cleaned up. I'm going to put the plastics back in everything even though the car's not done i'm going to build out the interior just to clean up my garage and get everything back get my bench back and get some of the car back all right man we gotta wrap this video up because it's getting really long okay hey listen i have more content coming okay i've got some badass billet hinges hood hinges here we're gonna install from fiddle fart fabrications from thomas hill um he's making some really cool parts we got that coming up we also have some door strikers we're gonna be putting on that's his it's pretty cool so we had to test fit those um gas tank we got installed gonna run the fuel system and we had to put on the rear end so i have an 88 over here that needs to be built and finished up and we gotta slap that in with some rear suspension at least get it as a roller uh, we can move the car around and then start working on the brakes Finish up the alleged cool body work, blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of stuff. But hey, I appreciate your patience with this stuff, man. Hopefully you like this content. I know it's taking a while for me to get anything out. And that is because I'm a busy guy. I have a real job, okay? Hey, life is busy right now. I'm very busy in 24. I'm doing what I can to get out here and wrench away and at least get some content for you. Hopefully help you out in your project. So I do appreciate your patience with this little ego brutes here. Slow, but it's gonna be worth it. It's super rad. I can't wait, but that's gonna do it. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time, guys. We got more coming.